Productive writing times. Now that is something that every writer strives for and the topic for today. So what are some ways that you can have uh, productive writing times? The first thing that you can do is to set a specific goal. And what that looks like is what you want or need to write so that when you go to sit down, you're not looking at a blank screen because you have a clear idea of what your goal is. And that goal doesn't have to be, uh, the goal can be whatever you want. It can be a certain amount of chapters or words, whatever works best for you, set that goal. Minimize distractions. Um, and that can mean different things for different people. Like for me, I like to have a specific area that I'm writing in. I also like to make sure that um, I let my family know that I'm writing <laughs> or um, I make sure I'm in a place where there are no distractions, like I'm not seeing things around the house that need to be done. I've got good lighting, I've got music. So minimize distractions, whatever that looks like for you so that when you actually sit down to write, there aren't things around you or in your space that is gonna distract you and pull you away from writing. Having a writing routine. Now, when I say this, some writers, we kinda know that we need one or you know, some writers will cringe like, ugh, writing every day, I can't do that. But what I mean by that is really just finding a routine that works for you and works for your life. And that can look like different things for different people. That could mean just writing three, four times a week. It could be writing just on the weekends. It can be writing in the evenings, in the mornings. Whatever that means for you is just having a routine because that routine helps you to build a really good writing habit, whatever that means. And not just any habit, but one that fits your writing life or your life. Let go of perfection. Whew, this is a hard one. <laughs> I think a lot of times when we, we sit down to write, like we want to make sure that the sentences are perfect, the scenes are perfect, you know, we're writing the perfect prose, and if it's not, then we kind of feel like we got to go back and edit it, and we edit it to the point where we've wasted an hour to just write 500 words or probably a couple of sentences, right? So what letting go of perfection means is just, you know, not worrying about the prose, not worrying about specifically, you know, what you're writing, just get those words down so that you're focusing instead on your goal that you want to reach and achieve, as well as getting into that flow. We know that creative flow that we get into when the words are flowing and you're, you know, the words are just flying onto the page, you're in that zone. And that's what I wanna encourage you to strive for because let's face it, perfection is an illusion. And I can tell you from personal experience, no matter how awesome you make those sentences, chances are when you edit and edit and edit, they're gonna be completely different. So let go of perfection. Be open to new things. This is a one that I think I sometimes struggle with because, you know, it's easy when we are, you know, we're used to doing things a certain way, they've worked for us in the past, so we have a tendency to like grab onto those and hold on for dear life. And then what sometimes happens is that we get into a rut and we basically stagnate our creativity. So when you're open to trying new things, what that does is get you in a mindset and a, and a frame of mind where you're open to you know trying new methods of writing, trying new writing times, and also just being open to possibilities instead of just, it has to be done this way, I have to keep writing this way, this is the way that works for me. So just letting go of that and just being open to trying new things. Practice self-care. <laughs> you know, as writers, we all have our favorite, or I should say, we can usually survive on our favorite unhealthy snacks, too much coffee or tea or soda, whatever that beverage is for you. And a lot of times that works for a short period of time. But unfortunately, what happens is that if you are that's stretching into longer times and then you're combining that with, you know, lack of sleep, stress, whatever crazy things you've gotten on going on in your life, it can really drain you physically, emotionally, mentally, and of course, creativ creatively. So it's really important that you take care 
that you practice self-care and take care of yourself because when we take care of ourselves, we actually take care of our creativity in ways. And that can look like, you know, getting outside every once in a while, moving your body, getting out, hanging out with family, just doing things that actually improve your emotional, physical, and spiritual well-being. That makes such a difference because trust me, as you get older, <laughs> those times of, you know, not taking care of yourself and just letting it go for long periods of time, can catch up with you and not in a good way. This is in addition to, you know, being prepared, having um, a specific goal is good. But when I say pre be prepared, what I mean specifically is making sure that you have your outline, that everything that you need when you're writing is in your area, in your immediate space, um, whether that's a snack, a drink, whatever tools that you need and not just physically, but also like if you have um, some of your research or whatever is on your computer, just make sure you know where those are when you're sitting down to write. And what this does is it allows you to reduce the time that you're stopping to, oh crap, I gotta get my outline, or oh crap, I need this resource or this to do what I'm doing. And then when we do that, whether it's one time or repeatedly, it really messes with the flow of our writing that we can get into, or it takes us longer to get back into that flow. And in, in a sense can really um, be detrimental to productive writing time. This one is my personal favorite. And that is before you start to write, sit down to write is to take five minutes to write out a summary of what it is you're gonna write. Now, I use this if I don't have a specific goal or I'm just not clear about what I want to write. Like I might have an idea of a scene in my head or what I want to happen, but it's not very clear. Then I like to take five minutes and say, okay, what is gonna happen in the scene? Who's gonna be there? Uh, what's gonna happen? How is this gonna affect the story? How is it um, helping the overall story, art, character, as much as I can think of to help me to write. And why this is important is because for me, it really helps me to one, get the creative juices flowing. And two, it really helps me to start to map out in detail what I'm going to write, who I'm going to write about and what's going to happen. So that when I actually sit down to write, I find that I write so so many more words, anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 in an hour. So that strategy, more than any, has really helped me a lot. Stay organized. <laughs> I know I rat about this all the time for those of you who've been um, watching these videos for a while. And what that looks like and why it's important is because, let's face it, when we sit down to write, if we don't have what we, if we're not organized and we know like where our notebooks are for the story, or where the files are that we need, it can really make it difficult. I learned this the hard way at the beginning of my writing when I was like killing myself trying to find a note <laughs> that I wrote in a journal and I have a lot of journals and I just didn't know where this note was that I knew that was gonna be crucial to the story. And also recently, I did something I don't normally do and I just randomly made notes in a journal outside of the normal story journal that I use and it took me, oh my gosh, literally two days to find this. <laughs> so when you're organized, and I don't mean just your physical files, but also your electronic files, it just makes it so much easier so that when you have a lot more books out, getting to that, getting into the habit of being and staying organized will make such a difference because let me tell you when it comes to organizing your marketing material organizing all your book stuff your book covers your uh, your promotional stuff it can get crazy if you don't have a system and you don't stay organized whether that's your physical files or your electronic files so i highly recommend that you get into the habit of being organized because that can really impact your having productive writing times. Get excited. <laughs> and what I mean by that is how many times do we say, oh my God, I gotta sit down to write or beat ourselves up. Oh, I need to write. I can't, I gotta sit down and write instead of saying, oh man, you know, it's my writing time. I can't wait. I'm so excited because just that attitude and that positive mindset makes such a difference to your 
how you write in your writing time. Because if you're tra dragging yourself to sit down and you're like, oh God, I gotta sit down and write, it's gonna be harder for you to get into that creative flow that we all strive to get into. Whereas if you hype yourself up and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna write, this is what I'm gonna write about, it can just put you in such a good mood and get you into that creative flow sooner. Not to say that you can start off the other way and get into that creative flow, but I find personally, it takes me a lot longer to get into the creative flow. If I think of my writing time as ugh, something I have to do instead of something that I really want to do. Reflect and adjust. Now, this is really important because reflecting, it's important to reflect and what that looks like on your writing times. And what that looks like is reflecting on what worked and what didn't work, because that's really important so that we're always working towards having better writing times. Because let's face it, that is actually a journey. It's not something that's a destination. You get there and everything, every single writing session is gonna be wonderful and perfect. It's not. And this is where the adjust comes in. And being able to adjust and, you know, not just, like work on what's not working, but that ties into what I was saying earlier with being open to new ideas and trying different things and constantly not just adjusting what's not working, but also looking at changing methods and continuing to learn and just adjusting and pivoting because trust me, in your writing career as a whole, that's a really important uh, skill to have, but especially with your writing time, your writing times. You really want to be able to reflect and adjust so that you're constantly learning and changing and pivoting and adapting. Because as I said, it's not a perfect destination. There is no right or wrong way. It really just boils down to finding what works for you and being open to possibilities to improve your writing times. So, and making them more productive, of course. So, what are there any tips and strategies that you use to have more productive writing times? I'd love for you to share them in the comments. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in the next video.